All right, all right. Moses in the building. What's going on with you, my G? All right, man. So, uh, so what's 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 going on, man? Um, let's start off by you know introducing yourself. You know, letting the people know who you are and you know where you came from and uh, what you did before you got in the trucking. All right, so the, I think you said the first one is, who, who am I? Like, who is Moses, right? So I guess that starts with, like, where was I born and raised? Uh, born and raised Syracuse, New York. Uh, uh, let's see, from New Syracuse, New York, man, I did um, my tour in the Navy. I, I went into the Navy, like, in 1989. I did my uh, boot camp in uh, Great Lakes. Uh, from Great Lakes, they sent me out to uh, 32nd Street Naval Station in San Diego, and I was assigned to uh, the uh, Amphib Squadron on February 7th, uh, which is an, it's an amphibious assault squadron uh, where uh, this particular side of the Navy, we transport all of the Marines' equipment you know, into, uh, into hostile territory. Okay. And then from, okay, so then from the, I did, uh, I did, well, I was uh, in the uh, that first Persian Gulf War back in uh, 1991, mm -hmm. and uh, we see from San Diego. Actually, you know, while I was in San Diego, we had to do like a like a split tour, so I had to actually do like a temporary duty down in uh, New Orleans because mm -hmm. our ship wasn't even built yet. It was like in the process of being built, uh, and actually, when I when I got down into New Orleans, it was. It was pretty much complete. It just had to go through, like, a lot of inspections and stuff. But, like, once the inspections were done, it took, like, six months. I was, so I lived in New Orleans for, like, six months. And then once all those inspections were done, uh, they released the ship, and we sailed it back over to San Diego. So that was my duty station for those four years. I got out. I, I finished active duty in 93, but I had to do active reserves because, you know, the, the conflict was still, it was still kind of heated. So no. they weren't allowing us to just. Now, go ahead, go ahead. now the Gulf War, uh, did you did you see any action over there as far as combat goes? Yeah, yeah, but I can't I can't really get into uh, any details because you know we're still under a lot of those security clearances, right? But I will t I, 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 what I can tell you is while we were out there um, in the Persian Gulf as, as Navy personnel. When you're going out there with with with, with Marines mm -hmm. and, and you type with the Marines, in your mind you're saying to yourself, "Damn, you know, I feel sorry for them, man, because they they can really see some shit." And in your mind you're saying, "I'm glad I'm gonna be on this shit, man, because I don't want to see none of that shit." Because right. you know we out there with we out there with aircraft carriers and guided missile cruisers. And, you know what I'm saying? We like we like heavy out there on the water. These dudes gotta go like see these people face to face. But when you actually get into the situation, bro, it's not like that, bro. You are in just as much danger, if not more danger, than the Marines that people out there on the water, bro. Because they got these mines out there that be, they, they lay these water mines. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they're like subsurface. And and uh, I'm not going to say the name of the ship, but one of the ships got hit out there, bro. And that's when it got real. I was like, wow. oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Now let me ask. You, now let me ask you this. I know the danger was like was like real, real close, and everybody was on uh, was on uh, was on red alert as far as what's going on. But I want to ask you this, uh, and I know at that time, you know, with the battlefields that was going on, and I know getting paid wasn't even <laughs> wasn't even a it was even an afterthought. But how much did did you guys get paid? more while y'all was in battle or or was it the same when you know you being enlisted you know you get paid more um and uh hazardous duty status yeah you do get paid more and, it, and it's a sufficient amount too you know what i mean because they know that your family you know what i'm saying has to have that support while you're going and everything so yeah the hazardous duty pay it, yeah it, it does increase it's almost double to tell you the truth all right, so you uh, so you spent four years uh, and and a little bit after, uh, did what did you re-enlist or you just did your four your four and out? 
Yeah, I did my four um, active. I did my four active reserves, and then I was out. So it was like a total of eight years. Oh, okay, so so you still got a so you you considered a veteran. So you got that good. Well, they they claim that it's good. The the good ben- uh, health benefits and everything. No, you got to be in for like twenty years just to get all that. You know what I'm saying? You got to retire at twenty years to get all what get your, all on benefits. You got to be what your health ahead. benefits. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I have access to, to the uh, veterans um, clinic, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But uh, I do have access to that, but those services are not free to me. I still have to pay, you know, percentages. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> but, but, of course, that, but, of course, that's the hospital I'm going to go to before I'll go to a civilian hospital because, you know, there are it, it's discounted prices for me. I got you, I got you. All right, so you say you hey, uh, do you know? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna I was gonna ask you if you knew Tiffany Hannah. Uh, uh that works over not not personally, uh not personally. I did reach out to her uh several months, like well, years now. So I say maybe about a year, year and a half. I reached out to her. Mm-hmm. We 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 connected we we connected a little bit, but we were supposed to we were supposed to, you know, get together on the podcast, but uh, I just, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just felt, I, I just felt, uh, that you know, with her allegiance with uh Trucker Brown, that she didn't, you know, that she kind of like declined to come on to the show. So, well, I don't, I don't know anything about that. I was the only reason I was asking because I wanted to tell you that she's a fellow squid. Now she actually did retire. She she did like the full twenty years. So she gets those free uh, benefits. She she gets all of the perks. Oh, okay. uh, I think she um when she came, yeah when she came out she was like an E seven. I think she was a, either a, a chief, mm-hmm. a chief or a senior chief, which is like you know one of the high. It, it's close to the highest enlisted rank that you can get, man. She she definitely did her thing when she was in there, yo. Oh, okay, she, she yeah, that would be. Navy, she uh, bossed up in the navy and she bossed up in trucking too, yo. Yeah, that would have been boss. that that would have been an awesome uh, if if me and her would have linked up. That would have been a that would have been an awesome conversation right there. All right, so my bro, you you from New York? Uh, let me ask you this: You know the verses is about to go down. Uh, Big Daddy Kane versus uh, KRS One. Who you got on it? Um. Okay. So, uh, all right. Let's 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 talk about this New York thing real quick. Because mm-hmm. you know, in New York, in New York, there is a okay. So you got like the boroughs, right? You have right. you know Manhattan, Staten Island, mm-hmm. Bronx, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. You know Queens, mm-hmm. Jamaica, Queens. You got all the boroughs, right? The breeze. But then you got right, right. The breeze. Got all of that. But then you have their uh they other family. It's on the other end of the highway, up there uh, across I ninety, mm-hmm. Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica. That's the other half of the New York family. And that's the that's the family I come from. I come from like the Syracuse Orangemen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that the home where the Syracuse Orangemen play. That's where I come from. Now, when it comes down to the hip hop music, I'm gonna say automatically say I'm gonna say Big Daddy Kane. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to this birth thing that's going on right now. I haven't really been into it, man, because my brain is focused on something else. Right. And, and that goes back to, you know, who I am. You know, I'm more of a righteous body now, man. I'm more of a, a, a what you would call a conscious body. Uh, I'm, I'm associated or affiliated with, known with, you know, the conscious community. So my mentality is, you know, I'm, I'm like on higher universal planes, so I haven't really been paying attention. Well, uh, you, to the family that I used to pay attention to. Well, you know, like I said, I you know I haven't been I haven't been interested in verses either. But I I've been you know being you know I keep my ear close to the streets. Like you know I, you know I I watched the uh, the lots versus uh, Dipset, and I I knew the lots was going to take that. That was a wrap. But uh, but you know, Big Daddy Kane, you know, uh, Karis One, you know that's that's my era. Right there, you know what I'm saying, Big Daddy right. Kane, when he went up against uh, LL Cool J in the legendary battle, you know, and then KRS One, you know, ain't you know ain't no slouch. So between the two, I mean, even though Big Daddy Kane got I, I rocks with him, I'm I'm gonna have to go with the bridge, bro. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm gonna have to go with the. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with the KRS One on this one, man. Oh, you know what? I must have missed that because I when you asked who was I going for, I didn't catch that you were saying that Big Daddy was going up against KRS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a pass. I made a pass mistake, bro. <laughs> KRS One all day long. <laughs> you KRS One so is from my backyard. You know what I'm saying? We got them Jamaican roots. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I, I didn't catch that, bro. I, I yeah, that. Or, I mean, you know, me like that. I said, I, you know, like I said, I, I, I grew up with, I grew up with both of them. You know what I'm saying? Boogie Down Productions, KRS One. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Big oh. Daddy Kang and the Drews Crew. You know, but as much as, as was, much as I'm for Kang, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I fuss with him, but. I, I don't know, yeah. you know. He he's going up against he he's going up against uh, KRS One. You know that that boy got lyrics for days, man. So I yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go with KRS One on this one, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going with Chris on that too, man. Chris Chris's lyrical game is. I don't even know how they even. I don't know who came up with Big Daddy King going up <laughs> against Chris. I think Chris needs to be going up against somebody more like uh uh uh. Rock um uh, Air B Rock Kim. Oh, no, no, like Rock no, Kim, no, 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 not Air B. No, bro. No. That man, that's a DJ. That, that's a DJ. It wasn't a DJ. Be, I'm talking about Rock Kim. I, I mean, uh Rock that's why I was about to say no Air B and Rock Kim, but uh, Rock Kim, that's no, uh uh, Rock Kim man, listen. You know, like the <laughs> Mm -mm. That that would have been so if they was if got, they was going up against each other that that would have been a tough one. But I I'm gonna have to slide. I'm gonna have to side with Rakim, bro. That's the most underrated slept on uh, MC in fucking Definitely. history, bro. And that's who Chris needs to go up against. He don't need to be going up against Big Daddy Kane. Mm. Big Daddy, that 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 that's gonna be a slaughter, bro. I don't even know who put that together. Uh, man, like I said, you know, every time people keep uh, coming up with they with they top five, they top ten, Rakim ain't 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 never on there. They always go with these bum ass motherfuckers, man. But you know, Rakim. But see, the reason why. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Rakim, yeah, say that. Rakim. Rakim. Lyrical form all day, all day, all day, every day. All day, air it's day. All heat. It, it's all fire. It's all on point. Mm -hmm. All, all of the, and, it, and it's all on, and it's all on point with the beat. You know, I mean, him and him and uh, Eric B. You know, them being you know a DJ and a lyricist. I mean, that is their chemistry is just it's just perfect. And, and if, if they go into if he was to battle Chris, he, he Rockin would definitely have to have Eric B. on the table just to make sure that the beat is dropping right. They they should just mess the way Ooh, they should correlate, been man. Perfect. That, that would have been a perfect. Re, that would have been a perfect reunion because Eric B and Rakim haven't been, you know, they haven't been in the midst for 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 years, and that that would have been a perfect reunion for uh for uh Chris to go up against Rakim yeah. and Eric B. Man, you right yeah. about that. People can be hopeful though. You know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe this broadcast will wake folks up and be like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's coming. It, it's, it's coming. It's coming. You know, Air B. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm I'm sure. Uh, I'm I'm sure. I'm sure. Whoever whoever produces uh, whoever producing the verses, man, it, it's coming. It's coming. All right, my G. So uh, so so yo, when when did your trucking career begin, bro? Trucking career, the actual OTR career began in 2004. But I've been a CDL driver since 1995. So. Oh, okay, okay. So you got you got some you got some years on your back. You got some years on your back. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, Ninety five man started out at FedEx as a courier. You know, delivering them those uh, time sensitive packages for Federal Express. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I graduated from the van up to the step van, then from the step van to the uh, day cab tractor and the pup trailer. And then that's when I decided I was going to go to uh, Schneider uh, Bulk Liquids Division in uh, in two thousand four and uh, train uh, bulk liquids because I wanted to start pulling petroleum because I was told that, you know, petroleum drivers were, like, making bank, which that was a lie. But I went to Schneider. That's where I got my uh, my full-blown uh, CDL OTR train. Okay, so you got your so you got your CDL, but you got, you got your CDLs before 
you went to Snyder though, right? Yeah, yeah. I mainly had to go to Snyder uh, for that tanker endorsement to add the tanker endorsement for my CDL, and also I had to upgrade my CDL uh, B. It was a CDL A license, but like I said, I was only driving a pup trailer, so it was like a restriction that I was dealing with. So when I finished the Schneider, the, the restriction was lifted, and I had a tanker endorsement. Okay, so what? Uh, so being down with Snyder, man, what? How how long you was with them, and what was your experience like? Okay, so this is the deal, right? Like I said, I wanted to drive petroleum, right? And Schneider had that deal where, like, you know, they wanted you to drive for them for a year. Cause, you know, or else they're going to hit you. They're going to charge you uh, for the, the training that they gave you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't stay long, bro. I, I was there for, like, about 90 days. I got my uh, certificate. Uh, my uh, my safety certificate is a bulk liquid driver. So that uh, X uh, was, was set on my driver's license. Bro, I called the petroleum transport company, and I was driving uh, uh, petroleum like after after ninety days. Uh, you 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 kind of drowned out there for a minute. Hello. Oh, I said that. I said that. Uh, I said that. Um, at Schneider, I only stayed there for ninety days. Once I got the uh, uh, tanker endorsement and the hazardous material endorsement. On my uh, CDL, I left and I went to petroleum transport company back in uh, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, to drive to drive petroleum. Because at the time I was married, my wife and my children they didn't want me to be out on the road like that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So you, uh, so without I say what about twenty years or so? What was some of the what was some of the good what was some of the good companies that uh that you rocked out with and what's some of the companies that you 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 will never go back to? Okay, so good companies, man. And see this is why I reached out to you, bro, because I'm like, I think I'm a special case. All right, so I have the Schneider Petroleum Transport Company from Petroleum Transport Company. I went to uh Fomex. You want to know about like the mega carrier companies, right? No, like, I just, I, no, okay. I just wanted, you know, like I, I just want to know, like, what will come, you know, I'm trying to keep it short because you, you've been in the game for 20 years, so you know, I'm without you going through each okay. and every one of them, I, I just pick out the ones that you enjoyed yourself with, and then just pick out the ones that you that that you don't think that you'll recommend or go back to. Right, right. I won't recommend going back to CR England. I won't recommend nobody going to night refrigerated or night uh, drive in. I will not recommend nobody going to Transport America. I will not recommend folks to go to uh, 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 Covenant. The places that I, that I felt that I, that I rocked out with was uh, Raven out of um, Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Love that, love that place. But unfortunately, there was a big batcher down there that I. For some reason, she just had an act to grind with me, man. Uh, I'm doing the job. I'm like, yo, I'm handling things. I'm doing things the way that y'all want it done. But it was like the lady was literally trying to find things, you know, to, to try to pick at me about, man. It got frustrating. And I'm like, I felt, I felt like the lady was, like, trying to put my CDL at risk because, you know, she did, um, you know, send me certain places that were, uh, like, really risky to get into. She didn't give me really good directions you know, how to get to the place. So I felt like, you know, she's trying to set me up for failure. Overall, the company was, was I, I would go back. And, I, and, cause I, and I, I think I found out that they had terminated her even after I left. I think folks were, like, looking for me. It was like, yo, what happened to Lenny? And then folks, you know, did their little investigation, and then she ended up gone. So there's a possibility I could go back to Raven. After Raven, I would also recommend where I'm at right now, but, I'm dealing with the same situation that I was dealing with over at Raven, too, man. Where I'm at now, I'm over at Land Air, and I was watching the video that you did with another Land Air driver, and I'm like, see, I think somebody over here on some bullshit because how is it that this driver got only three years' experience, and he's making or he's bringing home $300 more a week than, I, than I'm than i bringing home? I got 17 years' experience. These uh, folks told me it was going to pay me 90000 a year, bro. Right, they not so even they not even honoring a letter. All right, so let's uh let's let's catch up because that's what you reached out to me for. You wanted to uh you wanted to uh let us know a little bit about uh about land there and what's going on. So what you want to put down on land there? Okay, so that's the first thing right there. I'm like, okay, so it is possible 
for you to be a driver with 17 years experience and you could be making less than a driver with only three years experience over here. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I, that's facts. I got proof of that. I got receipts on that. The thing that bothers me though, is that when these recruiters reach out to you, like the recruiter over here that reached out to me, they, it was a, a offer letter. They were offering me 90000 a year on, on some account that was supposed to have been coming out of Savannah, Georgia. And that account was supposed to have been paying uh, 15 50 a week. Right. right. So that's 16, and I was like, look, I was 16 like, 50 a week. Uh, that, yeah, that, that constitutes close to 80, 80, 90 K a year. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, what's, um, so I'm looking at all of this and I'm like, after, you know, some things I've been through in the past, I'm like, I'm going to need this recruiter to put this stuff in writing. Mm. And I thought it was going to be a problem, but she did. She said, uh, she sent over the form and it was like, you know, uh, lines that I had to initial and sign. And I, and I signed that initial for the 15, 50 a week mm. account that's coming out of Savannah, Georgia, right? For 90,000, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So when I get down to orientation and I complete orientation, they don't send me to the place that I signed up for. They send me to another terminal. And and, and the account that they put me on is not a, a, an account that pays fifteen fifty a week. It's an account that pays only twelve fifty a week. Mm. And week after, week after week, I'm like, hey, you guys told me this. Hey, look at my offer letter. I signed it. I'm supposed to be getting paid this. Hey, hey, hey. And it's like it just fell on deaf ears, man. I'm like, oh, my God, man. So, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. So, you, you, you and the recruiter, the recruiter, uh, the recruiter reached out to you, uh, gave you all the information and, and, and gave you an offer letter that everything that was laid out in the letter had you to, mm-hmm. had you to sign the letter saying that everything, mm-hmm. everything is a go. But as soon mm-hmm. as you get as soon as you get to the place, your mm-hmm. it, 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 everything that was on the offer uh, offer letter was thrown out the window. Was there? Did you get a chance to talk to the 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 the, the fleet manager, or did you or did you call the the recruiter back and say, hey, you know this this ain't this this ain't going as 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 I thought it would, bro, bro. Okay, so let me tell you. I, and I'm quite sure you know how the whole orientation process rolls. Oh, of course. When you finish orient, when you finish orientation, who is the person that they send you to uh, 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 to introduce yourself to? And he or or she gives you the rundown on the terminal and what they expect from you. Who is that person that they send you to send you to after orientation? That's your fleet manager. Exactly. So. Uh, like now, the term, now where I took my orientation was out in Nashville, and that's actually the terminal I was supposed to be out of uh, running that one account that they uh, wanted me to run. But they sent me from Nashville over to the terminal in Greenville, Tennessee, and they told me the guy, uh, the, the fleet manager, to meet. And they was like, he comes in at seven o'clock in the morning. I got there like the, the night before, um, you know, slept, woke up at like six o'clock in the morning, took a shower. You know, I'm waiting, you know, like 15 minutes before he comes in, you know, ready to, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get to work. I'm like, yo, the sooner I meet him, the sooner I can get into a truck and just get down the road and start making his money. Mm-hmm. Yo, 7, 7 o'clock came, 7.30 came, 8 o'clock came, 8.30 came, 9, 10, 11, 12. But even today, bro, I have not yet met this fleet manager, bro. He is, he never introduced himself to me. I have not had any con- phone conversations with this dude. The only person I've ever talked to is the two dispatchers that dispatch this truck. Now, what kind of fleet manager does not come out to meet a new driver and does not give that driver the, the orientation? For that particular terminal, you see what I'm saying. So you, what so kind of how, how, how how long has it been? How how long has it been? You you talking like you haven't been there long? No, no, I, I came I came off break. I came off my break in uh, at the end of May. So I I got here like end of May, and the orientation finished like early June. And so yeah, I'm just completing that ninety days, and I have not let this do. But I saw a lot of. I saw a lot of foul stuff, man. I'm like, see, I, but I'm telling you, this company is a good company, but for some reason, I just got folks that's just not feeling me for some reason. 
what's some of the what what's some of the foul stuff that 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 you seen with 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 Landair? <laughs> okay, all right. So I get my truck. 